What is the long-term effect of too much information? One of the effects is the need to be first, not even to be true anymore. So what a responsibility you all have to be to tell the truth, not just to be first, but to tell the truth. We live in a society now where it's just first. Who cares? Get it out there. We don't care who it hurts. We don't care who we destroy. We don't care if it's true. Just say it. Sell it. On January 26, 2020, the world lost an amazing human being. To call Kobe Bryant a basketball player does not do him enough justice. The world lost an icon, a man, a figure that inspired and touched millions of people across the world. Just a day prior, everything was normal. And 24 hours later, for all of this to happen, when everything seemed fine and dandy, is one of the craziest experiences I've ever gone through. With a story like this, we knew the world would stop and focus on it. All eyes would be on Kobe Bryant and the helicopter crash. And as I've gone through grieving over Kobe's death myself the past couple of weeks, there seems to be one thing that keeps on bothering me about that day and the following days that came after it. And that is how the media handled the whole situation. And today we will take a deep dive into exactly how the media mishandled and really took advantage of a situation that has rubbed me personally the wrong way. Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant and his daughter, his 13 year old daughter Gianna, uh, passed away in a helicopter accident in Calabasas early Sunday morning. So, upon receiving the news, the biggest problem that everyone had were the conflicting reports going around social media. There wasn't really a clear picture of exactly who was on the helicopter at the time of the crash. Everyone knew that there was Kobe and there was the pilot. But aside from those two, there was no clear source on exactly who else was on the helicopter. There were sources saying that it was Kobe, the pilot, and all four of his daughters. There were sources saying that even Rick Fox was on the helicopter and died in the crash as well. I mean, my god, there, there were even reports saying that Vanessa Bryant learned about Kobe's death through TMZ before the authorities were able to properly notify her, which was then later denied by TMZ, in which they claimed that they were in touch with the Bryants before posting any news on social media. So if that is true, we're at a point where there are lies being spread about other people's lies. If TMZ is not lying, First of all, if you were lying, shame on you, but assuming they did not, assuming that that's true, that TMZ did post everything after the brands were notified, meaning that Vanessa did hear from the authorities. What is true, however, is Rick Fox's family hearing about their dad's death through social media, which then to come find out wasn't even true. Um, my family went through in the midst of all of this, something I couldn't have imagined them experiencing. Um, I spent time talking to my kids for about 45 minutes as this was all happening and fortunately you know one of my my daughter's greatest fears is finding out that a parent or one of her parents would be lost uh, through social media mm. instead of from a, a you know a loved one or a family member and and uh, you know she fortunately called me and we just were talking and crying about the news of Kobe and and my son and then we started you know so we were talking I was talking to my kids just trying to spend the time with them and then the phone just started going off and and then all of a sudden my best friend King Rice who's a basketball coach you know King Kenny North I'll Carolina tell you, I'll just tell you the story yeah, between King yeah. and King Rafa okay he, he well. walked off the court at Iona and somebody apparently told him that I may have been on the helicopter and he he started calling so I'm seeing King's number you know repeatedly going and going and going and I think he's worried about me so I said I'm going to talk to my best friend and I answered and I said, hey man, this is crazy about Kobe and he just was bawling. And I started crying and he was like, you're alive. And I'm thinking, well, yeah, like, what do you mean? And he, and it was in that moment that I, my phone just started going and my mom and my sister and my brother. And so now I'm like, I'm super nervous. And so we're at my house and I'm just waiting and I'm debating what to do. And I'm telling my, now I'm telling my son, I'm like, I don't know if I should call him. And so I just text Rick. I said, just say, hey. And he texts back, hey, with a broken heart in my heart. And I just screamed. It's, it's the race still, to be first. Yeah, that's, that's it's irresponsible. Tell the story. Yeah. You don't know what it it's does. It's irresponsible. It's, there was a big problem not just in the NBA community, but just in society of people wanting to be first so bad. 
of people prioritizing trying to be first to a story than being right about a story as Denzel said in the beginning of this video. To the media members who covered the story and fumbled it, shame on you. People look towards you guys as a source of information, as a source of truth. We grew up differentiating media in two ways, fiction and non-fiction, made up versus reality, cartoon versus news. But the way you guys have been covering stories with the priority of just being first instead of getting your facts straight is really blurring the lines between the two when, when I look at news, even from a professional source, that there's still a possibility that it can be false. But on a smaller scale, I'm also disappointed in the YouTube community for taking advantage of a situation like this for their own personal gain. Kobe taking over the park for the lifetime RIP go. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Let me know what you guys think. I think, I don't know who else was on the helicopter with him. It might have been his daughters, y'all. It might have been his daughters. Who knows? That's some people are saying it's his daughters, y'all. Hit that sub button, hit that like button, y'all. RIP to go. Bro, and then straight up, straight up, if you're making fun of this or you're making any memes, you're streaming, talking about R.I.P. Kobe Bryant while playing Fortnite or a different game and being happy, bro, you lame as hell, bro. Wow, this, this is crazy. Man, it's, it's getting ridiculous out here. Not only was this a rush video, given the fact that you literally said, I don't know who else was on the helicopter with him. It might have been his daughters, y'all. It might have been his daughters. Who knows? You didn't even wait till you got the slightest of information. You didn't even turn on the camera and make a heartfelt video. You instantly hopped on with no real information aside from Kobe dying, played 2K, and just talked out of your ass to upload it as quick as possible because it was a trending topic and you knew people would click on your video because the whole world's attention was on anything and everything Kobe Bryant related. And it worked, right? It worked. Nearly 5,000 views in 10 minutes? Wow. That's on pace for 30,000 views in the first hour alone. But the fact that you go, let me know in the comments section, y'all is really disgusting. It's it's disgusting. See, being in the YouTube game, I, I know how this works. Aside from making content, there's a couple of things that the YouTube algorithm takes in order to rank our videos. And one of them is engagement, primarily meaning likes, comments, and subscriptions. And for I run you to use this situation to do just that is disgusting. And then for you to title the video, Kobe takes over the park for the last time in NBA 2K20. What what does that mean? What does that mean? I, I'm so confused. Are you saying that you're my player is Kobe? Are you pretending as if Kobe was playing 2K or something? And then you went on to put not one, not two, not three, but seven mid rolls on this video. Seven mid rolls. I don't care that you deleted this video. You put this video up on YouTube waited for it to go unlisted, went to your creator studio and manually added seven mid-rolls. Manually. YouTube doesn't automatically play seven mid-rolls in a 10 minute video. You know, I, I, I'd like to say I've never seen such an insensitive act, but the fact is I have. I'm actually gonna try and FaceTime Kobe. And let's just see if he's actually alive or dead still, guys. I just wanna know because this is actually so scary. So guys, guys, what should I say to him? Well, guys, I don't even know. You're gonna put, hello. Is this Kobe? Guys, I'm gonna keep it simple for now and let's just hope, let's just hope um, it's him. Guys, he's actually read it already. How was he ready? Guys, this is actually could be him. Yo, look guys, let me know what you think about this in the comment section. There's also videos of kids trying to do these call them at 3 a.m. videos, which again is just appalling. It's appalling. For you to hear someone's death, Call one of your buddies to pretend to be that dead person, have a fake conversation with the main goal of tricking impressionable kids for views and for money is such a disgusting act that I don't I don't even know how you can live knowing that you did something like that. I I, I don't. And for the people saying they're just kids, that they're only 12 years old, that that's not an excuse. It, it's just not. I learned at a very early age what respect is, what morals are, and I believe a lot of people have. And the kids in these videos knew exactly what they were doing. They're old enough to know what's right from wrong. They know exactly what they were doing, and it's disgusting. You know, at least they had the decency to not only delete their videos, but it looks like you can't even find their channels anymore, so at least thank you for that. But you still made the video, and it was a disgusting act that no one should be proud of. No one. <laughs> This
This has to be one of the most disgusting acts of cloud chasing I've ever seen. When I saw this for the first time, I was legitimately pissed. As you guys saw, this TikTok is suggesting that these were Gigi Bryant's last words before she died. And this TikTok has gotten over 400k likes and nearly 4 million views on TikTok. Now, if you guys don't know, TikTok has this feature where you can actually see other videos that use this audio on their own videos. And what you find is two things. Number one, this is a straight up lie, period, point blank. The original sound was posted on January 16th, 10 days before the day in question. Number two, there are tons of people on TikTok that have seen this and think it's actually true. There's also this, like, what, what's wrong with though? There's also this one, there's no proof of this. This is made up. Where, where did you guys get this from? There are definitely more examples of people using this Kobe news to gain some clout and to benefit themselves and it's honestly disgusting and appalling to see people use such a situation, such a tragic incident and just straight up tell lies, lies in order to get likes on social media. It's honestly sad. It's really sad. Kobe Bryant's death was a heartbreaking moment for a lot of people. While social media has given the world an opportunity to collectively grieve, reminisce, and celebrate Kobe's wonderful life, and the same with Gigi Bryant and everyone else on board in the helicopter incident. The aftermath of the situation is just the sad nature of our society right now. There are incentives to spread misinformation and half-assed things when what you get in return is millions of views and millions of clicks online that turn to money. And I'm not even going to act like I've been a part of this. I've obviously not done anything to this degree, but I've definitely made some videos in the past that I've half-assed in order to catch on a trend as soon as possible. Like I'm, I'm just gonna admit it in this video right now, when I made that Zion video a couple weeks ago, I was trying to capitalize off of Zion's debut, period. And I can't change what you guys think. But if it came off that this video in itself was an act of clout chasing on my part, my sincerest apologies, that's, that's definitely not my intention. This video was a hard one to make. If you guys follow me on Twitter, I actually decided to scrap it completely initially because I felt I was adding negativity to a situation that didn't need it. And then I decided I was going to make it again and then scrapped it and then decided to go through with it once again. Because I know this whole situation is a touchy subject and if it didn't involve death, I wouldn't doubt making this video, but it does and I want it to be sensitive to everyone because of that. However, the more I thought about it, I felt like I would be doing you guys an injustice by just letting everything I explained in this video go. Not that it's gonna stop this from happening in the future, this is definitely not the last time that a tragic event will be used for personal gain, but there are times where being a silent bystander is the wrong thing to do. And I felt like if I didn't make this video with the platform that I have, I'd be doing just that, if not worse. However, I did want to wait a week or two from when I announced that I was going to be making this video before uploading it because I wanted to respect everyone's time and, and just to let everyone grieve. And if there's one thing you guys can take from this video, it's, it's not that I want to take shots at everyone that I mentioned in this video. It's just the fact that I want all of us to strive to be better to take our time to perfect our crafts, have some morals while we're doing it, and learn from our mistakes and use this as a learning experience. But with that being said, I am out. Peace.